Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Energy Prof. I am Devashish Dewan. Today I will discuss on ultimate analysis of coal in the perspective of thermal power plant. There are two types of method for analysis of coal that is proximate analysis and the ultimate analysis. In the proximate analysis, moisture, volatile matter, fixed carbon and ash is determined. Whereas in the ultimate analysis, the element like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen and ash percentage is determined. In the ultimate analysis, carbon, hydrogen, sulfur and nitrogen are determined by chemical analysis in the moisture free basis. And the oxygen is determined by 100 minus percentage of this carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, nitrogen and ash percentage. And the ultimate analysis is also known as the elemental analysis. Now the question is, what is the importance of ultimate analysis? The ultimate analysis is required to calculate material balance accurately and to determine the calorific value of coal. On the other side, for the combustion of coal, determining the quantity of air required volume and composition of combustion gases and this information is required for calculation of flame temperature and flue gas duct design. Determination of carbon and hydrogen. To determine the carbon and hydrogen percentage about 0.2 gram of accurately weighted coal is burnt in oxygen. Where Carbon is converted to carbon dioxide and hydrogen is converted to water, H2O. Our main target is to measure the CO2 and H2O. If we know the weight of CO2 and H2O, then we can calculate easily the carbon and hydrogen percentage. And for this, this type of apparatus is used where CaCl2 and KOH solution are required. This anhydrous CaCl2 absorbs water means H2O and KOH solution absorbs CO2. And if we measure the weight of CaCl2 and KOH before and after, then we can calculate the weight of CO2 and H2O. This CuO acts as a catalyst and carbon and carbon oxide is converted to CO2. If we see the reaction 2KOH plus CO2 is equal to K2CO3 and H2O. And we see that 44 gram of CO2 contain 12 gram of carbon. And if the weight of carbon dioxide is Y gram, then it contains y into 12 by 44 gram of carbon. In the same way, here CaCl2 plus 7H2O is equal to CaCl2 7H2O. Here 18 gram H2O contain 2 gram hydrogen. And if we know the H2O weight means Z gram then it contains Z into 2 by 18. So the percentage of carbon is equal to increase in weight of KOH tube means Y gram into 12 into 100 by weight of coal sample taken into 44. Percentage of hydrogen is equal to increase in weight of CaCl2 tube means Z gram into 2 into 100 by weight of coal taken into 18. Now we will calculate the nitrogen percentage. For determination of nitrogen, one gram of accurately weighted powdered coal is heated with H2SO4 in gel dal flask. At first, in the gel dal flask, the, the coal is heated with H2SO4 in gel dal flask and it produces the ammonium sulfate. 
this NH4SO4 solution is taken in an another general flask and heated with excess NOAH. Then it will produce ammonia gas. NH4 whole to SO4 plus 2 NOAH is equal to Na2SO4 plus 2 NH3 plus 2 H2O. This, this liberated ammonia is distilled over and absorbed in a known volume of standard solution of acid. Means ammonia is absorbed by the known amount of acid. Here, the unused acid is determined by back titration with standard NaOH. So, the percentage of nitrogen is equal to volume of acid used into normality into 1.4 by weight of the cold sample taken. Now, question is how the volume of acid is calculated? The volume of acid consumed is equal to blank titration reading minus back or main titration reading. Blank titration reading means this acid is titrated before the ammonia is entered into the acid. Now, normality is equal to the gram equivalent weight per liter of solution. And this volume of acid consumed is in milliliter. So, volume of acid is converted to liter dividing by 1000. So, the percentage of nitrogen is equal to volume of acid into normality into 14 means nitrogen into 100 by weight of coal into 1000. That means volume of acid used into normality into 1.4 by weight of coal sample taken. The sulfur percentage is determined by the ESCA method. In this method, when coal is heated, then sulfur is converted into sulfur dioxide, which is converted to SO3, and in the presence of water, it is converted to H2SO4. This H2SO4 is treated with BaCl2 and it produces the white colored BaSO4. And this BaSO4 is precipitated. This precipitated BaSO4 is filtered, washed, and heated to constant weight. If we know the weight of BaSO4, then we can easily calculate the sulfur content. 233 gram BSO4 contain 32 gram of sulfur. Means 1 gram BSO4 contain 32 by 233 gram of sulfur. So the percentage of sulfur is equal to weight of BSO4 formed into 32 by weight of coal sample taken into 233 into 100%. Determination of ash. In the proximate analysis, we have already discussed to measure the ash content. In the same way, here, coal sample of accurate weight in a crucible is heated in a muffled furnace at 700 plus minus 50 degree Celsius temperature for half an hour. Then the crucible is taken out and cooled first in air and then in desiccator and weighted. The percentage of ash is equal to weight of ash left into 100 by weight of coal taken. Determination of oxygen. The determination of oxygen is 100 minus percentage of carbon plus hydrogen plus sulfur plus nitrogen plus ash. If we have a proximate analysis report, then we can easily calculate the ultimate analysis report of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen percentage by this formula. Now we will discuss the elemental importance in the ultimate analysis. Carbon. Carbon means fixed carbon plus carbon present in the volatile matter. Higher the total carbon means higher the calorific value of the coal. Hydrogen. Hydrogen basically associated with the volatile matter of the coal. P2 bituminous contains 4.5 to 6% of hydrogen. If hydrogen presents, it increases the calorific value. Nitrogen. In the coal, it presents 
up to 1 to 3 percent. This nitrogen comes from the proteins matter in vegetable. Inert nitrogen decreases the calorific value. As coal matures, extractable nitrogen decreases. And its proportion does not depend on the rank of the coal. Sulfur. Sulfur, it increases calorific value, but it is undesirable. Because its oxidation products in presence of moisture causes corrosion of the equipment and pollution. Oxygen. As oxygen content increases, moisture holding capacity also increases and caking power decreases. So less the oxygen, better is the coal. Different instruments are used in the RTP analysis. For your knowledge, Thermo Flash 1112 Microanalyzer and Leco Company's CSNS 628 series Macroanalyzer is used to determine the RTP analysis. Here, in this table, one example is shown here for the ultimate analysis report. This is given as as received moist basis, as received moist basis, and dry basis. Here, moisture is taken as an as an moisture. But in this case, the hydrogen and oxygen of the moisture is taken into account of her hydrogen and oxygen part and in the dry basis moisture free sample basis is given here so i think you understand well if you have any question please comments thank you if you like my channel please subscribe and press the bell icon to get the notification of our next videos please like and share Thank you.